Welcome back to Love Dingella, episode 10. Guys, I am dead. So it is the Monday after ACL. I had the best time ever, but three days of drinking in a row, three days of being in the heat. Yesterday was Chapel Roan and like a few other artists. I literally stayed for Chapel Roan. I was at the festival for probably an hour and a half to two hours and then dipped. I couldn't do it anymore. Like I hit my wall and there was no coming back. So me and my boyfriend came back and ordered food and rotted in bed. And that's what I've been doing majority of today. But I wanted to get a podcast episode up for you guys for Tuesday. So yeah, it has been go, 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 but I'm very excited. I feel like these next few months are crazy. In a few days, my best friend, my like childhood best friend, Reva, comes in town and she's staying for 10 days and we're going to look at apartments because I think she may be moving here um, in January. So it's going to be really fun. So definitely check out my other socials, my TikTok and Instagram, because I'll be more on those so you guys can see what I'm doing while she's here but yeah I'm very very excited and let's start with our highs and our lows so my high obviously this was my first like branded event that I personally got invited to because I did go to Coachella with Kapari but that was because I was Kayla's plus one and then I got to do like everything because I also had like things that I needed to post so this was my first one that I personally got invited to. So it just felt so surreal. I'm like, whoa, like I feel like a content creator. Cause sometimes I'm just like, I just do this stuff for fun, but this is my job. So opportunities like that really warm my heart. So that is my high. My low is the dust that is in my lungs. I thought that because this was Texas and it's not like Coachella is in the desert. So that makes sense when people get sick after Coachella, when people are always talking about their lungs. I did not think that I had to deal with that at ACL. And every night I came home and blowed my nose and it was black. It was absolutely disgusting. I was wheezing. My boyfriend has asthma. He was wheezing. It was a whole thing. So that's my low. I'm feeling a little bit better today but taking it really, really slow today. But today's episode is going to be all on long distance. I got a DM from a cutie girly pop that watches the podcast and she wanted to hear about long distance. And I feel like I have been doing this for like a year and a half now. And I feel like I've gotten the hang of it. We're like, I'm not saying my relationship is like we're perfect, we know exactly what we're doing, but I feel like we've gotten a good groove of being long distance and being very intentional with the time we spend together. And sometimes it can feel exciting because you're like constantly missing your partner, but there are times where you have lows where it feels like you just want your partner with you, like you're having a bad day and all you want to do is go home to your partner. So... I don't think that ever goes away, but it does get easier, especially when you have your own things going on. Like when I first moved to Austin, it was really bad because I didn't really have any friends. I didn't know a lot of people here. I didn't get out much, but building my own life here where I have my own friends, I have like a community. I have things that I like going to by myself. Having that has helped a lot because I'm living my everyday life and it's exciting when he comes because then he gets to come and hang out with like the friends that I made here and all of that. But it's you you become a little less reliant on your partner and I think that helped with my codependency issues because I'm very codependent and I would love my boyfriend to come with me everywhere, but I have found my routine here. I have found my people here. And I think that's very helpful when you're doing long distance is to make a life for yourself. Don't put your life on pause because your boyfriend's not there. Don't live your life solely on your phone because I know that you can kind of get stuck in that cycle where you're not seeing people, but you're just FaceTiming your boyfriend or girlfriend or whoever 
every single day and you're not doing anything else because that's giving the fix of social interaction but you actually need to get outside and do things without your partner even if you're not doing long distance that's just a good tip because you don't want to have nothing outside of your partner i think it's very healthy to have things outside of your partner so that is my first tip um Next is when you're visiting. So let's say you are visiting your significant other. When you are there, plan your next trip. Whether you guys can do a month, two months, anything like that, plan it so you have something to look forward to. You can download an app where you can do countdowns where you're both looking forward to the countdowns. I think that's really cute. But having that in your head where you know the specific date and it's not like you miss your partner and you're like, I don't know when the next time I'm going to see him is. That is so daunting. So me and my boyfriend, honestly, lately we've been seeing each other a lot just because I've been having to go to LA for work. He's been having to come here for different things that we've had. And we have like a wedding to go to. Like there's there's a lot of things going on. So it's been really helpful because we just have those things. But if you don't have anything, plan your next trip. And that will be very helpful for not feeling so lonely because you have something to look forward to. So that's something that we did, especially when we first started long distance. It was something that we always did. Um Also, on that topic, I think trust is really big in a long-distance relationship. Long-distance is not for the weak, and if you don't have trust in your relationship, if you don't feel like your partner is loyal, that can completely ruin the relationship because you want your partner to live their life while you're somewhere else. You don't want them to have to put their life on pause because you're not in the same place. You want them to be able to go out, to go hang out with their friends and you trust their actions that they're not going to disrespect you in any way so i think that is the biggest thing to work on if you feel uneasy about your partner living in a different city it is not the distance it is the trust you have within each other and that is not perfect right off the bat when i first moved here i feel like little thoughts creep in but you really have to create that stability at the core of your relationship and that will create a way better long distance relationship so me and my boyfriend have been long distance for i would say about a year and a half when we first met we were like dating technically so i guess we were doing like a bit of long distance but we weren't officially dating until we were both living in la and i think that obviously having the end goal of being in the same city because if your partner is saying i want to be here forever like i want to live in california forever and i'm like well i want to live in texas forever and there's never that like middle ground of we can find a place that we both like or i really love this place i will eventually that's my plan is to get out there ask yourself if you want to do long distance forever because that's just not ideal eventually you're going to want to get married you're going to want to have kids so make sure that is a thing that you discuss because you don't want to be wasting time like at whatever age you are you don't want to be wasting time with someone that is never going to work because you truly don't have the same goals in life or you don't have the same goals to be somewhere that is going to absolutely end the relationship so i would end it while you still have the chance because if that person doesn't want to be ever in the place that you're living and you want to be there forever it's sad but it probably would never work i think something that is also cute if you are in a long distance relationship just do thoughtful things i feel like a lot of the time when you're doing long distance it's easy to not do those thoughtful things like you would do if you were in person like let's say your boyfriend used to get you flowers like once a month or something like that or would surprise you by coming home with your favorite things or would take you on dates because those things don't exist in everyday life you need to make sure that you guys are doing that to each other so if i know my boyfriend has had a stressful day i will order him uber eats his favorite stuff or i will send him an amazon package of a stuffed animal and just like write a little letter that you're thinking of them 
little things like that go such a long way because it's a lot harder to do that in everyday life and you just don't want to forget about that and only do that every other month when you guys are seeing each other you want to implement that in their daily life because that makes a person feel seen and showing your partner that you're thinking of them even when they're not around is also so important to me anytime i'm like sick or i'm having a bad day i always have something at my doorstep and a text saying check your door and i think that's so cute and thoughtful and does not go unnoticed guys guys my back hurts so bad i want to just like lay here and talk but this is the worst angle ever if i could pod honestly one day i'll put the camera over there and just lay on my side and podcast if you're not watching and you're listening visually i'm sitting in bed but i really want to be cuddled up in a little cocoon (sighs) i did sit in a bath for like an hour and a half today because my muscles hurt so bad (laughs) but um that's just getting off track but that's that's all i can think about right now is my my back my lovely lovely back okay let's get back on track I think that if you are worried about your relationship, because I know long distance has an awful stigma. As soon as I told my friends I was doing long distance, my boyfriend told his friends he was doing long distance. Everyone was like, damn, like, guess your relationship is ending or like it was good while it lasted. Like everyone had something negative to say because long distance does have that stigma, but you have to have two people that are good at communication because communication in general is so important to your relationship but communication when you're doing long distance when you can't physically touch someone to comfort them where you can't give them something like that like you have to communicate how you feel so if your partner isn't communicating or if you're bad at communicating that is something that you need to work on because words are everything when you're doing long distance you have facetime you have text that is what you have and sometimes some people aren't as naturally good at communicating and that is the sole purpose that my relationship works so well is because we've worked on communicating something that he does upsets me i bring it to the table because there's no time to like him to read my body language or to see that I'm upset or huffing and puffing because we're over the phone. So you really have to communicate how you feel and be good at being responsive. I know I used to be a really bad texter, so I still am not the best texter, but in my relationship we just know that we do check-ins, like FaceTime check-ins where it's like, what are you up to? What have you been up to today? But also little texts throughout the day. I'm way better at like those little texts like I love you, thinking of you, those types of things than complete updates throughout the day because I'm just an overstimulated gal and being on my phone makes me way more overstimulated, especially if I'm around people. So I usually do check-ins because it makes the person feel like they're included in your life. So I text my boyfriend or I call FaceTime him before I'm leaving to go somewhere, tell him where I'm going, and then I call him after or I text him after like, oh, we just left this bar. We're going to the next one. Simple as that, but it makes your partner feel like they're included, even though they can't be there. I think a cute thing that my boyfriend also does is that if I'm asleep, because obviously he is two hours before me, if I'm asleep and he's doing stuff, he'll send me like pictures especially when he is other places because he travels a lot for work he was in japan so we were on completely different time zones and i would send him photos throughout my day because he was sleeping so it would be like photos and texts and all of that 20 photos throughout the day and then i would wake up to the same thing for him like a bunch of photos throughout the day and i think that's so cute so if you are on different time zones and you kind of miss their entire first half of the day or you miss them like going out or going to dinner it's cute to do that we do little food ratings where we'll take a picture of like a food if i'm at a restaurant i'll take a picture and then we send like four out of ten or something like that it's just like a cute finding little things that you guys can do that can be just between you two is so cute and i feel like a lot of like inside jokes and little like cute things happen in person so finding those cute things 
over the phone has helped our relationship a lot. Speaking of that girl asking me about long distance, I have not checked our little advice column in a minute. So while we're here, might as well look to see if anyone has written in or told us any fun stories because I have been hoping, really hoping that you guys will submit stories or ask questions over that. So let's see what we have here. I fear I need my laptop. So BRB. Guys, we have we have two submissions and I'm so excited about that. I feel like a lot of the time people don't use the advice columns or the submissions, but if this is if you needed a sign to do that, this is your sign. I would love to hear. Okay, so first one is any advice on toxic family? And my biggest advice is to I know a lot of people have different opinions when it comes to family, they think that you should have to put up with things because they are your family. But if you genuinely do not feel good around them, you don't have to be around them. Obviously, it depends on your age if you're still living with your parents. It's sometimes hard to create those boundaries. Try to have conversations with whoever your family member is and express to them how you feel in not an attacky way you know how sometimes if you tell someone like this thing that you do really makes me upset and da, 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 and you kind of vent they take that as an attack so maybe come to the situation and say i respect you so much and i want a relationship to be the best that it can be this is something that has been on my mind and i just want to have a conversation obviously if they are willing to listen and willing to work on it that is great but sometimes you don't have that and you need to know when to create a little bit of distance there is a lot of my family that i don't speak to um because they never put an effort with me and i was like why am i trying like i i'm the kid and i feel like all of my family kind of on one side of my family didn't ever put in the effort and I never really felt great around them and so I'm like why do I care and I just like I haven't I haven't spoken to my family on that side in like 10 years and that's okay I've like accepted that so if that's truly what you need to make your life more fulfilling and to make your life not a toxic environment do it if you have the capability of doing it and these people aren't people that you want to keep in your life they're your family and i think a lot of the time family thinks that they can just walk all over their other family members because they think they'll always they will always be there they wouldn't treat a friend like that but they would treat your a family member like that i think is crazy because i think those are the people that you should be showing the most love to because you know they will always stick around no matter what so if you need to cut ties cut ties this is your sign okay the next one is hey girl i love your podcast so my friend of like 15 years has been dating this guy for almost two years he sucks a lot and she could do so much better than him but she's cut off most of her friends in order to be with him then asks why her friendships have changed she has also put blame on me before which is rough because all of us are like we've been here the whole time it's literally you that's cutting everyone off i don't know it's hurtful and i don't know how much of a boundary is okay to put in place she also low-key knows no one likes him which is why she doesn't bring him around friends much what do you do when your friend's boyfriend sucks so much sorry for the ramble much love so i would say talk to your friend because relationships come and go and friendships i feel like are there to make life better and i guess if she likes her relationship and you don't think that it's like a toxic relationship you just don't like him he sucks and you don't like his personality i think express to her a lot of the time we think that the other person just knows how we feel like well they know we don't really mesh with their boyfriend or she knows that she should be making an effort with me but sometimes you have to spell it out for people and then you can make your decision after that 
so i would have the tough conversation of sitting her down and being like i really appreciate you as a friend i feel like ever since you've had this boyfriend we all know that i'm not that fond of him but if that's your choice that's your choice but i don't want that to ever affect our relationship and i want us to have our time outside of your relationship and i want you to come around and i want more one-on-one time with you and see how she receives that because if she's a good friend she'll be like oh my gosh i did not realize i was doing that and that was never my intention because sometimes people just don't realize they get caught up with everything they get swept off their feet and i've had some friends that like forget about their friends and then they come back when they go through a breakup and that's just the type of people they are but then expressing to them that that hurts your feelings changes so much where they are more intentional with okay they want to see me and i need to make an effort to see my friends as well sometimes you just have to tell the person so i would talk to her see how she takes it and then if she is not taking it well if she doesn't put the effort in with you like you put in with her then that's probably for the better where you probably have other friends that will make an effort with you and not all friends are meant to be forever and not all friends are meant to be at every point in your life sometimes i've had friends where i'm super close with them for years we kind of fall out of touch we kind of both were doing our own thing whether it's relationships finding other friends finding other groups and then years later reconnecting that can always happen too so if this is not your time where your life is aligning and you feel neglected in your friendship maybe it's not the time with her so just put your energy into the people that are putting energy into you oh my god that made me feel so happy that you guys are sending in things to my advice column i literally literally love you guys so much okay well my boyfriend's still in town he's here for another few days um so we're probably gonna go get some cutesy dinner and be very intentional with our time together so if you guys have any specific questions about long distance you know where to go my advice column is linked down below and all of my links are linked down below tiktok instagram my personal pages as well that's all linked down below so I love you guys so much and let me know what you guys want to hear next week. I may bring Reva on next week. I just need to buy another microphone. So, or maybe I'll borrow my friend Riley's, but hopefully next week's episode is with Reva or the week after. Don't hold me to next week, actually the week after, but let me know what you guys want to hear on this podcast. I love you guys so much and I will see you next Tuesday.